Hi, I'm indie fantasy author Melinda Cusera, and in this episode of Fantasy, Lore, and More, Andrew Clayton is joining me to talk about his book, The Simple Delivery. So I've already got questions, like, why is it a simple delivery? <laughs> Um, the title was a lie. It's not simple at all. <laughs> I was just gonna say, like that. That's this. We don't. There's never anything simple in fantasy. <laughs> no, that's probably like the biggest proofreading typo of my book. It's the title. <laughs> it's wrong. Oh, okay. So it should be the very complicated or the very well. What if we were going for like truth in advertising? Like, what would it have been called? <laughs> um, the delivery that turned into. Oh my god! I can't believe all this is happening to me. Uh, that's that's fun. That would have been a fun yeah, title have too. To quite a bigger cover for that. <laughs> that's true. That's true. But you see, you sometimes see books with like long title, long funny titles. So, tell us about this not so simple delivery. <laughs> okay, so this book is it's a humorous fantasy adventure centered around a young boy called Nicholas. He is how best to describe him he's a village boy he's like the quintessential fantasy medieval village boy and he likes it he's comfortable with his life he's quite happy. you know this is his little niche of the world he fits in it he knows what he's doing and then he gets chosen to deliver a message and that means he has to go out into the world which actually for him is a really scary place but he sort of justifies it'll be okay because i'm only doing a simple delivery <laughs> he said the title but that's always fun when you can fit that in i know <laughs> cheap plug so his task he has to go and deliver a message to a hero it's sort of it's a generational thing that people of his village get chosen to do it's a bit random every so often the oracle will get a message from the deities of some sort of cataclysmic event that Hero needs to intervene in. And the idea is that this gets passed to a word bearer who gets chosen and has to go out. And all he has to do is be at a specific place at a specific time and say the phrase <laughs> to the hero who can then go off, slay, save the world, etc., etc. And oh, wow, this is sort of based on the premise of so what happens when the hero doesn't show up? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. What yeah, could possibly got, go wrong, right? Pretty much everything. I got the um, I got the idea for the book playing Skyrim. Are you familiar with the game? I know. I, I mean, like, I know of it. I listen to the music when I write, but I've never actually played the game. And I don't know anything more that it's like epic fantasy with an yeah. epic score. That's like literally all I know about it. Well, yeah, you definitely got the epic, right? And um, in it, you you meet these characters, these NPCs, and they say some like really random phrase, and suddenly you get this quest pop up in your quest box. And I was playing it um, a long time ago, and I met this guy on the road. We had this really random conversation. I get a quest. And as I was riding away, I thought, what was he going to do if I didn't turn up? <laughs> and, so, and so the idea for a book was born. <laughs> Wow. No, that's like, yeah, like, yeah, what happens when the hero doesn't show up? D like, did the hero not know that? Like, did the hero not get the memo? <laughs> like, how do you explain, like, the hero not showing up? Did they, like, oversleep? <laughs> did they get drunk the night before? Well, th this one had a very good reason not for showing up, you know, without giving away any spoilers. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's wild. Yeah, so sort of Nicholas inadvertently ends up doing the adventure himself. He meets some companions along the way that help him and mentor him. And um, he sort of has to muddle his way through, really. As he gets embroiled in this world of mercenaries, vampires, necromancers, it, it really snowballs. Oh, wow. That's like, that's crazy. Do, yeah, I definitely went all in. Yeah, no, seriously. It, um, it, so, it definitely sounds like you went down the list. It's like, okay, got this, got this, got this. Oh, we need to add this in. <laughs> yeah, I'm, gonna just do all, I'm just going to do all these things to him. And then, you know, 
not be comfortable when I look at myself in the mirror the next morning. Yes, seriously. <laughs> That's wow. That's when we're like very glad sometimes that our characters are not real people because they would knock on our door and be like, hey, why'd you do this to me? <laughs> Well, sometimes I worry that they are because when I'm writing, they just go off on tangents all of their yeah. own. They go yeah. off on their own little side quests, and I'm thinking, I got no idea what's going on. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah. in control of this wagon anymore. No, yeah, I know that very well. <laughs> and then you're like, I hope they don't know where I live. <laughs> you, <Yeah>. know? <laughs> you know, you don't want them showing up and being like, hey, why'd you put me in this situation? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, cracking he, their knuckles. So you remember book three, right? Yeah. <laughs> Chapter 15. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right, right. And then, but they get into like, they, they run off with the plot, get into serious trouble, and they like turn around and like, all right, get me out of this. Yes. And you know what? You know, as long as it ends happily ever after, if I consider myself redeemed. Yeah, and like the worst is when it's like book one of a planned trilogy and you've announced it's a trilogy, like you got into this impossible situation where death is the only option. What What do you think I am, a miracle worker? <laughs> there have been some moments like that when I've written myself into a point, I'm like, okay, how do I get out of this again? I can't, I can't just go magic as much as I'd like to because, you know, fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like those are the that, that's when you're like, well, why did you do this? <laughs> Is backtracking? Can we can we go back and and not do this thing? Yeah, can we return to the save point and start again? Right. Sometimes, yeah. like you, sometimes with writing, you're like, okay, where was the where did this go off the rails? And can we not do that? And the character's like, no, it has to go this way. It's better this way. I find some of like the best scenes I've written in the book are just when I'm just typing stuff and I completely like my brain's out the equation and I'm like, actually, that's really good. Some of the best like side quests, some of the best fight scenes, some jokes, because it is a humorous fantasy. Oh, I love those. I didn't actually in ever intend for it to be. It just sort of happened um, because I'm doing like the reluctant hero. Right. Trope, it I lends wanted, itself to that, though. <laughs> it really does. And I wanted you know? Nicholas to sort of be a caricature of it almost. I mean, it turned out the book's almost slightly parody in a way. But I know, again, I never intended to write it humorous, but because he's such a fish out of water, it just sort of went there. And it took me probably three books to start owning the title. <laughs> oh, wow. Especially because humor can be really quite subjective as well, just because I'm chucking to myself when I'm writing. No, that's true. You're always like, I hope somebody else finds this as amusing as I did. It's yeah, <laughs> always then... my fear. I'm like, I hope I hope the humor came through that, you know. Yeah, and this it's and then you start seeing it in the reviews, like, oh actually, okay, so people do like my sense of humor then. <laughs> Right, because like sometimes the characters do things that are so dopey that you're like, I have to make a comment. <laughs> I I can't let this pass. <laughs> yeah, I'm... and it's getting to the point now where I, it's almost like I have to embarrass Nicholas every book, like one definitive embarrassing moment, because just to remind everyone that he is still that like fish out of water and he's got no clue what's going on. I like that's a that that was that I like that trope too the fish out of water because like that's so like that's so human like that like we all feel that way every once in a while you know yeah I like that like when you're when you the the protagonist of the book is not like the super god sexy gorgeous person who everybody falls at their feet enamored with <laughs> they can do no wrong I don't like that I like the 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 awkward somewhat awkward doesn't quite feel like they belong, doesn't quite yeah. know what's going on or what the right thing to say is. They're pretty sure they're going to say the wrong thing, and they do. <laughs> but yeah, they're trying, he definitely does that. You know? One of the things that was really important for me when I was writing this series was that, you know, his character progression is believable. He doesn't go from, so I've left my village, right, I've got a sword, slash, 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 there we go, all the enemies are dead. It's... It's a real interesting progression. Like even by the end of the first book, he still doesn't really know 
much about fighting at all. He's still a, he's still he's still that fish out of water. And as recently, I published the fourth book. Okay, I suppose that sort of as I was th- reflecting on it before the podcast, that whole that whole four book star is still the origin story. He's still sort of becoming whatever he's going to become. I'm not saying yes or no or spoiling anything. No. But it's we get to the point where he's sort of starting to take things. Okay, this is this is just going to happen. So I'm going to roll with it now and start learning. I like that too, like the learning trope. Not not so much when they go to school, but like learning in in the sense that they're like figuring out how their world works and how to successfully navigate this world <laughs> without having to deal with too many negative consequences. Exactly. I think the rationale in is like if these adventures are gonna keep happening to me, which yeah. apparently I'm completely it's completely out of my control. Mm-hmm. I'd best actually learn to do something with this sword I've got. Right. That's when you really hope they don't know where you live and they can't get to you because they can be like, why does this keep happening? Yes. <laughs> can't you give me a break once in a while? <laughs> yeah, you, you you get probably a chapter break. I can occasionally let you rest in a tavern and then right. you know, burn it down. <laughs> <laughs> you burn it down. Oh, man. that That's the that's just no luck there did do you want to go to an excerpt or uh do you want to say more about it uh, before like i love that you hit like all the the things like that it sound it makes it sound so fun yeah and you know what it's really fun to write as well it's, what yeah it's definitely a sort of a labor of love for me i tried like writing books all my life really and i became a victim of my own sort of self-editing where i do a ch- two chapters go start editing it, go, oh, this isn't good, and then just leave it. But with this, you know, it was a case of once once you're through that first draft and you think, actually, there's something here, and now I I can't stop writing. (laughs) But yeah, I'd definitely be happy to read an excerpt because I have my, uh, I'm going to get out the blur. Oh, yeah, it's really hard once you engage, like, I think you have to put it in front of you. Yeah, there's there's a very nice cover here. (laughs) Yeah, why don't you describe it for those who can't see the blur? <laughs> Unfortunately, it has the blur on to blur out the background and it's blurring the book. It, it's Yes, yeah. I do. And um, I think actually, because Nicholas is on the front cover, I actually think he's just a bit camera shy. <laughs> but you know what? Perfectly in keeping with his character. I, I respect that. <laughs> okay. Okay. I respect that as well. Not everybody wants to be on camera. So, so not only do you get me narrating a chapter, I'm going to narrate the cover as well. <laughs> Yes, I, I I see the character intervention on that. They're they're, yes. they're making you work harder for this. They're like, are you going to throw me into all these situations? I'm going to make you use your powers of your your powers of being an author and 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 description and yes. and on the spot describe this cover. All right, go ahead. <laughs> so for the cover, you've got Nicholas, main character, and he's on a bridge, and it's sort of a pivotal moment in the books because the bridge is where he's supposed to deliver this message. So he goes and he waits like exactly like he's supposed to. But instead of the hero coming along, the bad guys come along. In this case, you've got an armoured warrior called Silva and her barbarian comrade Grimark. And as they pass him on the bridge, there's all these captives and he sort of tries to tuck himself in and not get noticed but realize that actually i've got to do something and then they notice him and can't have witnesses when you're kidnapping villages full of people no you can't so he goes he gets knocked off said bridge and that's sort of the point of the book where events really get out of his control and okay you're in this adventure now are you there's no escape (laughs) so only forward Exactly. There is only forward. Well, down in his case. Oh, oh, okay, down. <laughs> okay, so shall I read the first chapter? Go ahead. This this is the point where everyone realizes why I'm not going to re- narrate my own audiobooks. Um. <laughs> 
Nicholas grimaced as the wagon hit yet another dip in the road, his top and bottom teeth clacking together in time with a jolt. He rubbed his cheek gently as if it would magically make the pain of the fresh bite in his mouth disappear. What else can happen to me today? With a sigh, he looked longingly back in the direction from which they come. Since leaving the main road, the track had become progressively less suitable for actual travel. Were people even supposed to come this way anymore? Unfortunately, that question did not perturb the driver, who carried on with a relentless determination to get to their destination in as straight a line as possible, which included not doing anything as complex as avoiding the frequent potholes. No, he was being unfair. The track was hardly wide enough for any kind of manoeuvre, potholes or no. The impenetrable tree cover to either side of them made sure of that, constantly asserting its presence with hanging branches that scraped the skin off the wagon's passengers. It wasn't the driver's fault Nicholas was here, he was just a symptom of the problem. This wasn't what he was supposed to be doing, nor where he was supposed to be. He had chores and responsibilities at home and life to attend to. Yes, fine, the air was cool and fresh with the smell of nature and its rich tapestry of greens and browns. And sure, the birds sang sweetly, but all that pelled beneath the incessant plodding of the horse and the creaking of the wagon that had entrapped him. You look like you don't want to be here, friend. The man opposite Nicholas grinned from behind a bushy beard, which, other than his eyebrows, was the only hair on his head, if you don't mind me saying. Since boarding the wagon, he'd made no attempt to speak to any of his travelling companions, instead defaulting into a mopey silence. In contrast, the seven other people in the wagon had been engaged in cheerful, expectant banter for the whole journey thus far. Their happiness about something he wanted no part of only served to make him resent being on the trip even more. But at least up until now, his fellow travellers had chosen to respect his mood. For a moment, Nicholas considered not replying and hoping the man's attention would drift elsewhere. Yet he hadn't been brought up to be rude, and the man seemed genuine enough. Being friendly to a fellow passenger was no bad thing. I don't, truth be told, he replied awkwardly, before adding for clarity, want to be here. Even before the words left his mouth, he'd known the reaction his answer would provoke, and the man didn't disappoint. The well-meaning smile dipped slightly as his eyebrows rose in surprise. He even went as far as to sit back in his seat and let out a whistle as he complicated what he contemplated, excuse me, what he'd just been told and attempted to understand it. This process involved a lot of head nodding and humming noises. In his peripheral vision, several of the travellers nearest him stopped talking and honed in on their conversation. Oh, the bearded man said finally, if hesitantly. Sorry to pry, I just thought, isn't this an honour? In Nicholas's experience, sorry to pry was what someone in the process of blatantly prying was likely to say, usually followed by more prying. Which meant this conversation was not about to just go away. Deities damn him for answering honestly. In truth, being of age when the choosing was called was considered a great honour, even if you didn't get chosen. Though that honour only extended as far as the boundaries of the village of Hablock, letting outsiders know that the people from your village could be chosen to carry messages from the deities themselves was not at all wise. The outside world was a dangerous place. It had to be, or surely you wouldn't need champions like the ones from the Hall of Guardians people like to gossip about in such an awestruck manner. And if the dangers weren't serious, why would the deities feel the need to send divine messages to put heroes on the right path to slay this and rescue that? Though presumably, they only got involved in the really important stuff. He couldn't see the deities bothering with the day-to-day -day bandits or angry trolls or anything like that. That had to be why the choosings were so far apart. Again, he cursed his luck. He'd only been 21 for a few days and this happened. Even the idea of being entitled a word bearer was unappealing, as was the prospect of all the unwelcome adulation if you returned triumphant. Never having to buy yourself a drink in the tavern again meant little to him. He found it a little peculiar, not to mention a lot of wasted energy, to spend a year waiting for a calamity to nearly occur so you could get some second-hand glory from it. Yet the people of Hablock had done that for generations. But he knew his place, and this wagon wasn't it. This, right here, was the furthest he'd ever been from the village, and he didn't care for it. Breathing exercises and calming thoughts were having no effect on his frustration. Today was meant to be just like all the others preceding it, the usual daily routine and the reasonable expectation of not being thrust into danger. Instead, his mother had smiled with pride when the news came that a choosing had been called which was the only reason he kept his composure long enough to find a pillow to scream into, 
once the many, many hugs and congratulations had died down. Don't get me wrong, it is a great honour, he told the man diplomatically, aware he was flying in the face of popular opinion, but it just isn't for me. Though nodding sagely, the man clearly didn't understand his response, but he seemed to accept it nonetheless. That endeared him to Nicholas. To each their own, the man said with a roguish grin and a shrug. That seemed like an excellent point at which to end the conversation. There had been an exchange of ideas and a nice closing point, so he was quite shocked when a hand was thrust towards him. Garrus Potter, the bearded man introduced himself. I just go by Potter, though. Nicholas Percival Carnegie, he replied taking the offered hand and shaking it reluctantly. The shake was returned with firm enthusiasm, his hand compressed like kneaded dough. Carnage? Potter asked if he, as he withdrew his hand and sat back again. No, Carnegie, Nicholas replied as he discreetly rubbed his hand. Shame, Potter chuckled. Nick Carnage, that sounds like a real adventurer name, much more impressive. Smiling thinly, he kept what he thought of having an adventurer name to himself. Potter would surely not understand, and he seemed like a nice fellow. His companion took the smile at face value, leaning forwards. Potter motioned to him to do the same. Perhaps, if you don't want any part of this, you could do me a favour, he whispered. Maybe you can tell the Oracle that you don't want to be chosen, thin out the competition a little, and make my odds better, eh? Potter finished the request with a cheeky wink. You want it that badly? Why would anyone want that? Was he the only sane person on the wagon? He couldn't truly get his head round it, but maybe he didn't need to. Maybe he just needed to do accept that some people would want it. To each their own, after all. Yeah, Potter said with enthusiasm. This is my time, I can feel it. Suddenly, Nicholas found himself fixed with an uncomfortable, intense gaze. You never felt like you have something more destined for you, Nick? He did not, nor did he care for being called Nick repeatedly. He shook his head. Well, I do. I'm ready to go and make my mark on the world. I've got something to give beyond this village and it's time to prove it. Potter sat back, seemingly lost to his daydreaming, presumably picturing whatever glory he thought destiny had in store for him. Good luck to you, he replied, determined to finally end the conversation. There we go. Ah, there we go. Always takes me a moment to get to get back to the screen to unmute it. <laughs> <sighs> That's so. All right, so in that is so. Is that the first chapter? That's the first chapter. So he's left his village. It's not the full first chapter. It's sort of the first extended scene of the first. I chapter. see. I see. So so there was a, something before this. After so afterwards he gets then in the next part of the first chapter we get to see him arrive at the oracle's cottage. Okay, and that's where thing the first left turn happens. Yes. <laughs> Because I think, you know, I don't want to say spoilers, but I think we know the outcome of the choosing here. <laughs> yeah, there wouldn't, it, when, when things happen in chapter one, like, they're not a spoiler. <laughs> it's, not, it's not exactly a dramatic twist. No, it's like, this is this is the inciting incident, so it can't be Although, a spoiler. You know what? If you're surprised by it, fair play to you. That's true, that's true. I guess, it, I guess if you've not read the, you know... Uh, a fantasy book that uses that sort of chosen one trope it could be but like it's you know if you read the blurb which, all right i i have bought books where i didn't read the blurb so i can't really okay i'm gonna shut up now because i have bought books where i didn't read the blurb and things in the first chapter were a surprise because i didn't read the blurb but in my defense it was an author you know I, there's some authors that i I like their writing. So I just yeah. see they wrote it and I buy it. And yeah, I'm surprise, yeah, straight then away. everything is a surprise. I don't even know like what, but like usually like most authors have like, you know, a set of tropes or a certain type of story they like to write. And that's yeah. why we love them. So, and, and, and is, is this the only like book series that you have? Like, would you say this is your type? This is your, like if someone encounters a book of yours that this is the kind of thing you like to write or is this is just something that came to you and you're like this is such an interesting thing i need to try this <laughs> no this this is what i like to write i mean this is the only book series i've got out so far but i've got a lot of plans once this one's done and i think yeah this is sort of my writing style i mean quite ironically i don't sort of not really a fancy reader myself i'm a military like military sci-fi 
Me too. And when I was when I was thinking about what book to write, I was thinking, well, do I go sci-fi or do I go fantasy? And I don't know. I just leant towards fantasy. I mean, I think my the justification I tell everyone is, did I want to have to explain how a hyperspace engine works, or did I just want to say magic? Right. That that is that's honestly the well. I had a fantasy setting and fantasy characters. But, like, I, I've thought about writing sci-fi, but then it comes down to, like, I love science, but do I want to figure... Because I, I don't think I could write space travel and stuff, like, and just make it be magic, because I like science. I would have to sit yeah. there and figure out, like, which which one of the many, like, ex physics, you know, extrapolations, like, ex um, theories are we going to use to explain this? And, like, the time that would take and all that, like, with fantasy, like, it's just magic. And we exactly. just, you know, we make it up. And as long as it's consistent across the different books and things, which gets yeah. trickier over time, it's, it's, it's fine. It's got to have an underlying logic to it, hasn't it? Yes. Just, yeah, just to make it sound and give it a proper basis. But, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I totally, like, that's a totally valid argument. And I, and I feel like a lot of... Uh, a lot of authors, you know, had to make that same decision to be like, do we, we how, you know, how much science do I really want to work with? <laughs> yeah. You know, not that science is scary or anything. I love science, but, you know, it requires actual research, whereas fantasy, you make the world, so you make the rules. Exactly. I was the, um, the third book in the series is a nautical adventure. Oh, wow. And I was sort of writing, I was thinking, oh my God, I got, I've got to research how, like, boats work that uh, I yeah every time I have a nautical scene I'm like crap I don't I don't know much about boats I know like three I, I know and then you start like in your head you're like your characters start doing things you've seen in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies or like whatever swashbuckling yeah. thing you last saw and you're like I don't think I can write that <laughs> well, no. I, Go I, I think I was a bit cheeky with it because it's from Nicholas's perspective and he has generally no clue what's going on around him you know he's looking at all these yeah. ropes and stuff on a ship and he's like the rope thingy and i thought hang on a minute i don't have to do any research because he doesn't know anything about boats well yeah you have to do enough so that like because you because because i i thought the same thing because i have a character in the book i'm writing now who doesn't know anything mm -hmm. about boats because you can fly so but like yeah. in this particular place the physics or the the magic doesn't she can't fly it's everything is all weird and she has to take a boat and she's mad about it and she just she has yeah. no idea so she's like so yeah so i had to know enough about the ship to know like what the heck she's might be looking at so i could figure out like what is something what would somebody who has no idea what any of this is how would they describe it <laughs> yes because you still have to describe like where they're at and if she they don't know the names that gets a little trickier <laughs> certainly does yeah so yeah. So the all right. So in his world, we've got an oracle who lives in a cottage. It, yeah. I heard references to some gods. So we've got like a polytheistic religion yes. setup going on. What what else is is in in the world building? Like what what else is this war as a feature of this world? Like did they, like what is this cho this choosing thing? Why are they doing it? So um, the world is called Aetherius, and when I started writing this book, I wanted it to be like sort of the quintessential sort of fantasy world. So you've got your rolling landscapes, mighty castles, huge cities. Um, the, the main setting of the series is in the Nine Kingdoms of Man. So it's about the human world. But then all around it, you've got all the kingdoms of pretty much every fantasy species you could think of. Centaurs, um, dwarfs, orcs. I sort of wanted to make it really broad. And I thought, you know, it gives Nicholas a lot of interest in places to visit. And even the Nine Kingdoms, man, everyone's sort of different to the other one. So some may be based on, say, Viking culture. Some may be more Euro European, medieval. A lot of it I'm sort of feeling out as I go a little bit on the journey with Nicholas. Because I know he's sort of the fish out of water. He has generally not much of a clue what's going on. Mm -hmm. I wanted to keep bits of it open 
so down the line I'm not locked into a point if I want to come up with something really creative but it's yeah it's it's a huge fantasy world um you've got your monsters you've got magic you've got spells and it's a world that's sort of in peril really um up until the point of the books mm -hmm. the um sort of peace justice and all that has been meted out by what's called the hall of guardians and the guild of heroes your sort of lone adventurer types who go out into the world and so they have much... a guild that's pretty yeah. neat yeah there's there's a lot of guilds in this world but yeah so they, they sort of traditionally go out and go fight danger like off on quests they're in these mm -hmm. big like mead halls bragging about their deeds and stuff until someone comes along oh no my village has just been attacked by a dragon right okay you off you go go slay that and so the guild of... so the guild tells tells them to go and do this yes. or so the guild gets paid and then the hero gets paid from the guild is that yes. or they sort of earn bounties or you know from grateful villages sort of collect some coin together and celebrate them and give their thanks. But it's sort of a time of turmoil where actually the guys aren't getting it done so much anymore. Is There's there, more and more crises there... going on. Oh, okay. And it's turning out that they're sort of not up to the task for all this widespread evil doing is the best terminology, I suppose. So people are becoming sort of dissatisfied. There's more of a slew towards, you know, we can, we've got armies. Let them do the job. You guys aren't cutting it anymore. You're all a bit drunk and on your own glory and mead. Yeah. I mean, there. it doesn't sound like there'd be a lot of incentive other than getting paid, but like to risk your life. Yeah, and um, because of the choosings, the, you know, for the deities to send a message that actually, hang on, we need to put this hero on track, you know, that's that's going to be the, the big level stuff. Like it said in the book, it's not your average, oh, our trolls wandered into the village and mm -hmm. made off with the local livestock. So the quest he's, Nicholas is eventually put on is pretty serious. But although it's sort of Although each book is sort of a self-contained adventure, right? there's an overarc to it all, which starts to come out the further, or the deeper Nicholas gets into that hole. You know, he suddenly, you get that, hang on a minute, is this is this all connected? <laughs> the, the, these can't all be coincidences. I mean, we hope not. That would, that would, too many coincidences. <laughs> is that a good thing? <laughs> well, no. It would be nice to have a reason for it all, wouldn't it? Right. Just no, everything's yeah. just going down the pan. Yeah, because then there's somebody to blame. Yeah. You know, otherwise it's like, well, it's just maybe the gods are don't want us. They're tired of us being here. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of sort of new stuff showing up that's not happened before. New different types of magic are emerging. New villains are popping up everywhere and it's there's a lot of questions as to what's going on. There's a lot of people who are fearful and sometimes that fear be, you know, breeds resentment to the ones who are supposed to be protecting you, but, or, you know, you, you guys aren't doing your job properly. Well, yeah, yeah. It, it sounds like it's a bit disorganized too. And that yeah, and as much, um, as much as it's like a humorous fancy adventure series, it's, it's theorists can be quite a serious world and the problems in it are serious but it's how it's nicholas's perception and his sort of interaction with his companions and his fish out of waterness that get is where the humor comes from but if you look beyond that it's actually oh wow there's some there's some bad stuff happening here. you know stuff's going down here and yeah so uh i guess that would be a spoiler if you if we talked about why it's all going down or can we talk about that um oh I suppose you could, I, i'm trying well, to the find characters the characters allow <laughs> yes well i will say like all this stuff is connected you know, okay there is, there is 
grand evil plans behind it all. And, you know, it's going to take a long time for those designs and the people behind them to come into the light, I suppose. Okay, so they've got to they've got to figure out who's behind it and why. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so you all right? So you said that there's magic in their spells. Like, it, yes. like what is there? Like a a rigid magic system, or more like a soft magic system where you know anything kind of goes. Well, when I was sort of approaching the books, I I sort of I wanted to make sure there was a system because I just didn't. I think sometimes when you just say people have magic, it's very easy for that to become almost god level power. And I wanted to make sure, like, because they have a wizard who travels with them, I wanted to mm -hmm. make sure there were some limitations that you can't just say, right, they're in this situation, he does magic. So in my world, um, how, how best to frame this? I've sort <laughs> of. Put it on the same level as you would a warrior you know if a warrior fights for a long time he gets tired you know a guy can only learn so many skills and for my magic system it's sort of magic comes from the like the life force of the person using it so using magic exhausts them so the more magic they use the tired they get and because you only have a finite amount of energy they the wizards tend to stick to like one main magic system that they learn say healing magic or mm -hmm. elemental magic and then they have like something on the side that they can learn as well but they tend to they tend to focus on one discipline to get really good at mm -hmm. well, i think that sort of like grounds it all a bit yeah okay so the different magics out so there's different disciplines and yeah. they can learn that's interesting yeah um, I mean, for example if, if you've if you fight a wizard for two, you know, if you're fighting a wizard and you're struggling with him, if you just keep dodging, he's going to get tired after one, you know, just like anyone. If, you, if you're a barbarian, you're swinging your sword, you know, as you get tired, the sword's going, okay, I'm, I'm having at you now. You know, suddenly yeah. the lightning bolts get a little bit, a little less sparkly, you know, the range is a little less. No, that's, so it's, so it's so it sounds like it's it's like somewhere in the middle between hard and, and soft that there are rules, yeah. but there's not but they're more universal. There's not like yeah. rules. There's not a, a lot of rules for like each different discipline, uh, yeah, or that or you don't know yet. You, you may not. They, they might all be there, and you just haven't found yeah. it yet because <laughs> we we only see what the characters see. <laughs> yeah. So the um the the wizard they eventually end up traveling with, he's a healer. That's his main discipline. You know, he wants to heal people. He wants to help people. But as he's traveling on these adventures, he's like, oh, you know what? I actually think I might need to learn some offensive magic here as well. Because, <laughs> yeah, the bad guys keep coming. <laughs> yeah, they tend to do that. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, you know, it's Nicholas does get beaten up a lot. So it was really handy to have a healer on call. <laughs> I mean, unless the healer decides he doesn't feel like healing anymore. <laughs> there is that, yeah. You know, it's my day off, man. I, I, I just, I just healed that cut, and you've gone and opened it again. Yeah, I'd be like, well, until you learn your lesson, I'm not going to heal you again. Yes. I think I read something like that where the healer's like, "No, you chose to walk into that sword. I, now you have to bleed. <laughs> <laughs> if you start dying, maybe I'll heal you." <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I don't remember yeah, what I was what... just before you lose consciousness and I'll be over. Yeah, I don't I don't remember what book that was, but I remember there being something funny like that. Um which which I, I liked because it was like it's it's not something you see and 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 it humanized the healer. Like they're not just like an, an automaton that distributes healing magic and fixes your fixes your wounds immediately. Yeah. So I, I definitely thought that was neat. Um, so, all right. So we've got the Oracle and the Oracle here is from the gods. How many is, is there like a big system of deities or, and like how involved are they in people's lives? Um, There is. So the deities, I haven't sort of pigeonholed them all yet because again, I, I like to keep a bit of a mm -hmm. question mark open for creativity. But there's sort of 
I suppose, like Greek Roman gods in a way. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like you have the deity of change and evolution, the deity of healing, the deity of war. As a general rule, they're sort of not generally involved in people's data. You know, that people worship them and stuff, but it's it's sort of they sort of have their own rules about interference, which is okay. which is brushed upon at one point. And that's why sort of um they do get involved in the sense they give messages to the Oracle, but the messages themselves are a bit vague because of their rules about getting overly involved. Right, right. And I guess they need to respect that that pesky thing called free will. Yes. And that's one of the things when Nicholas gets the message, he he's like, I'm sorry, you want me to say what to someone? <laughs> Will, will, will he know what that's about? Do I have to? Do I? Am I going to have follow up questions? And and when that person doesn't show up, like that's got to be awkward. Exactly. Yeah. Well, it's even more awkward when the bad guys show up first and knock you in, knock you off a bridge. Yeah, that would be rough. Wait, they knocked him off a bridge. Oh. Whoops into like like was like at what is it i mean i i hear bridge and i'm picturing like the this the three mile long tap and z well it's not tap and z anymore it's, it has a different name now um over the hudson river because that's like you know well it's not quite three miles it's it's, it's more your traditional stone bridge over the river and yeah okay yeah, it's it's not a massive way yeah that's that's why it's the inciting incident in the book because he's supposed to wait on the bridge he ends up splash. Oh. And then um from then on he's well when he comes to, he's in it then. Yeah. Uh he's wow. Yeah, suddenly he's the participant and um now he's the main character. <laughs> yes, exactly. He, yeah, he's not the he's not the non player character anymore. He's um oh actually I'm Am I the guy now? There's, there's so, no one else around to do anything about this. He hello? Hello? So does he have to give himself the message? <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> well, it's it, it comes in handy later on. Without sort of giving away too much. He does, Um, I mean, I think it's fair to say that going off a bridge, there's a, there's a fair amount of head trauma there. So maybe it, um, it's not at the forefront of his mind for a while, let's say. I mean, I can completely understand that. It would not be at the forefront of my mind either <laughs> if there was, you know, a, a bridge and some falling happening. Yes. Well, being knocked off of, I think, is um more, the more appropriate. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, mean... He, 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 fall, he falls with assistance. Falls with assistance. I see. I see. So that's... And you, you mentioned goblins earlier. Where do they fit in? Um, they're in the world. It's like I say, it's pretty much got every fancy creature you can imagine in it. You know, orcs, goblins, and they're not some of the features in sort of the first books. I keep that quite contained to this little area they're in. But mm. as Nicholas goes exploring more, he's going to meet more and more people and see how I see all these sort of races that he's only ever heard of because you know have havelock is a little it's in this little corner of the kingdom and it's very like you don't get centaurs knocking around very much <laughs> yeah, and i wouldn't think so that's, so that, that's... that's part of his exploring the world mm -hmm. seeing all these new sort of cultures and his interaction with them as well so aside from the wizard does he does he like is anybody else decide to have bad luck with him <laughs> yes so we've got the wizard um the wizard's actually an orc called garaz i found that um i think that was quite an ironic one for me because i was like you know what big strong orc let's make him a healer <laughs> no that's really that's a fun twist i like that i like when when a character you don't expect has 
an ability you don't expect or some there's something about them that you don't expect that yeah. goes against type i i like that it makes them interesting you know it breaks them out of the the mold that you're used to and, and now they're an individual they're not every orc in every book you've ever read they're this particular orc you know and they have a name and a backstory exactly and um there's also a shape-shifting thief who ends up joining him on his journey which comes in quite handy. Yeah, that would be handy. Yes. And he also needs a mentor because he's got to learn some stuff. And that ends up being the hero who's supposed to give the message to. Oh, really? But, but not in necessarily the form he expected it in. That's interesting that the... That the he, the, the hero he was supposed to tell would become the that his mentor that's a fun twist yeah because he does he does need a mentor and in in later books i introduced some characters to help him with i suppose the um the ass kicking while he's still learning right right yeah so the, the party does sort of grow mm -hmm. as the series progresses but the um the hero his name's oran he's um He's a bit of an arrogant ass. He's a he's very self he's sort of your typical fantasy hero, sort of self-aggrandizing. He will tell you stories about his deeds at great length, whether you want to hear them or not. Oh wow. But at the same time, he sort of they do impart wisdom, his tales. And there that's one of the fun things I enjoy writing in the book series. It's like, right. Okay, Oren's going to support some wisdom. What what sort of story can I come up with now? No, I, yeah, no, I, I can be really fun when characters tell each other stories. Yeah, um, and I, he's that's... been doing. He's one of these guys. He's sort of seen it all, done it all, slayed it all. Yeah, Bedded pretty much a woman in every village he's visited, sort of thing. Well, of course, I mean, yeah, he is and the... he's and he's sort of the top of his game he is like the legend you know mm -hmm. people tell stories of him there's plenty of sonnets because he's the man well of course so, so nicholas sort of really couldn't have asked for a better mentor you're nice i don't usually give my characters mentors i make them figure it out on their own. <laughs> well i thought i'd done enough to the poor boy after knocking him off the bridge well, I like to write about mages, so they already have an they already have an advantage that they have magic, and ah. even if you don't know what you're doing, like if you have some kind of elemental magic, you can do a certain amount of damage by accident. Oh yeah, yeah. You so throw enough like, fireballs, you're gonna hit something. Yeah, so I was like, you know, you already have an advantage. You don't get a mentor. Sorry. Yeah. You have not been chosen for a mentor. You get to suffer <laughs> on your own. Unfortunately, Nicholas has no magic, so he needs he needs backup. Yeah, that that's always like that's always that's just, so that how so uh, before he picked up any companions when it was just him, that must have been challenging to keep him going from place to place and and getting out of danger when he doesn't know how to fight and he doesn't have magic. How did you, how do you how did you approach that? Well, I think. With Nicholas, he's he's anxious, he worries, he's sort of the guy who thinks of all the near-death scenarios that are likely to occur, but his heart is in the right place. And when you see sort of what happens on the bridge, he realises, oh, actually, there's there's no one else around. You know, I can't... A, a handy troop of knights isn't going to just ride by that I can flag down and go, oh, um, yeah, the bad guys went that way, if you fancy it just you know go and deal with them you know there is only him so he as much as he thinks of himself in this little box he's actually got a lot more to him and that comes out quite quickly you know he's, he's got the heart and even though he's scared and he's got no idea what's going on he's still got that courage to keep going even though he absolutely denies that it exists Oh, wow. And, like, what keeps him going? Like, he could have just, like, turned around and, you know, 
after he got out of the river and, and dealt with the head wound and like crept home and been like, you know what? Screw all this. I'm not getting involved. He comes close. <laughs> Believe me. But like I said, you know, when if you see a lot of people in danger and you realize you're the only person who can help, there is no one else. He's he takes up the mantle because who else is going to help them? And he can't he can't just walk away. You can't just go, oh, you know what? Those villagers have been kidnapped. They're probably off to their doom. But yeah, I'm kind of tired now. I've had a long day. <laughs> I think that's sort of the, um, I think that's sort of one, the really good thing about him. Because, you know, sometimes he he will he can whine. He can complain a bit. He, he knows he's a fish out of water. He embarrasses himself. But he keeps walking the road. Mm -hmm. he, he knows what the right thing is. and despite his lack of belief in his finer qualities, he's got them. And then sort of by the time we come to the end of book four, he realizes that actually I'm in this now, you know, this is, this isn't all going to go away. So the fifth book called um, trail of death is coming out in June. Mm -hmm. And that's sort of, the next stage of the series where Nicholas is right. I'm in this right. Come on guys. You guys need to actually teach me how to fight now. Yeah. Just the fact that he survived book one is that's a credit to it. Oh, it's not unscathed. He, he goes through some stuff. But he still manages to come out of it alive. So either he found every healer on the way uh, on his on his route to where he's going, um, or he got very lucky that they missed anything important. I think with, with the first book, it is, it is really a lot of luck on his part, like the people he meets along the way to help him and stuff. Because, like I said, I didn't want him going from like naught to hero. Especially yeah. in the first book, because it's it's just not believable. Mm -hmm. I want I want I want the series to have sort of a grounding to it, where actually you think, oh, okay, you know, okay, this guy's a little bit. He starts off a little bit whiny, but he's got something about him. Let's let's see where this goes. Oh, okay, okay. That that's a hard balance to find, but it sounds it like is, you it is found it. Bit. Yeah, because whining is hard. Like that, nobody wants to read that. <laughs> but it, it's 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 also normal if, if you were just ripped out of your life and had to just randomly deal with the same things. You might be a little whiny too. Well, exactly. I think you know. I think we can all sort of relate to that. We've all done stuff where we thought, oh, oh, is there anyone else who can do this? Why me? Yeah. You know, this this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. And you know. I suppose, you know, they say is your main character based on you. I suppose he's a caricature of what I sort of used to be like. Oh, that's oh that's interesting. So he's based on on uh, in reality a little bit. Yeah, well, a little sort bit of, of art imitating you know, life. Back when I was younger, I was could be quite anxious myself, quite focused on right, this is my little bubble and stuff. And I sort of took that and amped it up because I think a lot of people can relate to that really. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have our journeys. We go on. We all have our our simple deliveries that go horribly, horribly wrong. And <laughs> then, yeah, what happens when we do that. You know, if you you know you don't necessarily it's the guy who in the village who's chosen isn't necessarily you know the guy who's done a thousand push ups a day and like the guy he meets in the in the wagon Potter who thinks he's got sort of grand, some sort of grand destiny sometimes. Sometimes it's just a dude. Right. I mean, that's true. You know, somebody has to be just a dude. You know, you and know? how how would that just a dude think, you know, how would he react in that situation? You know, there's there's gonna be an element of, oh God, why me? Yeah, I mean, yeah, especially like since he didn't ask for this, he didn't sign up for this, he got thrown into a river. <laughs> that was yeah. his uh, that was his job interview. <laughs> Exactly. So there's, there's no compensation, no health care. No. Very short life expectancy. <laughs> yes, certainly that. It's especially in his own mind. Right, right. So you have any um 
any any like a favorite part of this world or a favorite character? I think I've got two favorite characters. I'll so one it. of them one of them is Oren because he's just so fun to write because he's just so he's such a self a shameless self promoter. You know, no one knows how good Oren is more than Oren. <laughs> And getting to write those little stories that he tells is quite a bit of fun. And then you've got Shift. I really enjoy writing them as well because they're sort of the sassy thief. They've got these skills, but a bit like Nicholas, they have a better heart than they think they do. They've got more of a conscience. And I think, you know, where Nicholas is Mr. Serious sort of prim and proper you know i'm going to formally introduce myself to people shifts more of a all right guys how's it going so that um that purse looks quite full on your belt there mm -hmm. and she's sort of the counterpoint to nicholas in a way yeah no that's cool and any favorite place Favorite places. Um, I think, yeah, there is, and it's it's a tavern. Um, when I first started the series, I came up with all these like really random scenes in my head, mm -hmm. and one of them was a fight that takes place in a tavern. I don't want to sort of give too much away. Right. I had this, I had this idea, and I was like. I, mi I pictured this tavern in my head exactly how it would go down and I've sort of been waiting to write it because I, mm -hmm. I needed to find somewhere it could slot in and it turns out it's the opening chapter of the fifth book oh yeah and I was like okay yes I can put this here and this is my opening and I think what sometimes when you write a scene it's like exercising a demon isn't it because it's been in your head for so long you're like right onto the onto the keyboard go 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 Yes, no, I I can definitely relate to that. And it's it's uh, one of the scenes that I sometimes you can really like. Right, I'm stood here. I'm the main character. I can see this going on. You know, you yes. you've got this like crystal clarity of. I know exactly how everything in this room looks. So for me, it's that random tavern. That's so cool, and it and it's because you've been waiting five books yeah. to show people yes. this. <laughs> yes. That is wild. And now you said, you said it's a series. You said there's four books that are out. So it's, you're writing book five now. Book five is going off to my editor. Nice. That goes off um, in the next couple of days, actually, which is pretty cool. I'm just going, at, giving it one more obsessive go over mm -hmm. and touch up before it goes off. But right. um, so far I've finished series wise. I finished the first draft of book nine. So I'm like well ahead of myself. Oh, wow. So do you have a, a, is there, like we're recording this day on March 1st, 2024. So any estimates are based on that date. So when do you, do you, do you have a, a date that you want to publish book five, book six, book seven, yeah. book eight? <laughs> so generally the sort of how I'm able to publish, I'm generally releasing two a year and book five will be coming out in June. And book six is slated for a December release. Oh, that's sort okay. Of, that's sort of how I've done it the past couple of years. I mean, hopefully, you know, if the series takes off, I can start releasing a bit more frequently. Mm -hmm. but at the moment, sort of, I've got it set up as, I don't want to say production line, but I've got everything in place of, right, this is how this works and give mm -hmm. me enough time to do everything properly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I can, I can write a lot faster than I can publish, but I'm, I'm on it. No, and that's, I mean, I think that's the case for a lot of authors that yeah. publishing is, it, it's it's involved and, and it's not that we don't like doing it, we do. There's just, yeah. there's just a lot of moving pieces and it takes us a while sometimes to get those pieces moving. Exactly. And I want to make sure I do it all properly, you know, because the people who are enjoying this series, they deserve good books. So yeah. I want to make sure I take the time to deliver those. And my editor is brilliant. I love my editor. Her name's Danny. And yeah, she loves the series. And she's also really good at calling me out on my mistakes as well. 
And you know, and that's important. Exactly. And as much as the minute I press that send email and I've sent it off to her, I'm like, right, right, for the rest of the month, you know, I know whatever feedback I get, she's going to be adding value to it. No, that's awesome. All right. So June and December for that. And in your writing book nine now. Yeah. So is is that the last book or is it gonna continue beyond nine? Um, there's gonna be 14 in this series. Oh wow. Yes, I know. I I gave myself a lot of work, but when I was sat down planning out the overarching mm -hmm. story for the series, it's like I can't do it in any less. Like to, to tell the story properly and not rush it and make make sure everything sort of pays off properly. Yeah, it's got to be 14. Wow. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I want to make sure like the readers are getting the payoffs for all the things that I'm sort of subtly setting up in the first few books of the series. Right, right. And I know. That's pretty cool. As, as a writer, I'm very much, like, like I said earlier, I'm very much like, I'll go where the keyboard takes me. Yeah. I do, I do know, I've got sort of the framework that I work to. I know what each book's going to be about. And generally, I've got an idea of like, when I start writing, I know, I know the beginning of the story, I know the end, and I've got probably a couple bits in between that I want to get to. But beyond that, it's just, okay, fingers, do your thing, <laughs> away you go. Yeah, especially like if your characters are willing to like take hold of the keyboard and, and be like, you know, this would be a really great thing too. <laughs> yes. Because it's always fun when, when they get involved. It it really is. And yeah, when, when events just sort of happen, it's it's really awesome. Like I said earlier, some of the best bits in the series are is stuff that I had no idea about until I typed it. Mm -hmm. That's a, like, to me, like that's the, that's the fun part of writing is that the stuff that you didn't plan that just sort of happens. And you're like, where did that come from? It really is, isn't it? Yeah. And then you're like, then you're like, all right, characters, you're holding out on me. You, you did this brilliant thing here. So why are you do these dopey things over here? <laughs> you <know? laughs> yeah. you're like, What's going on here? Why can't you make good decisions all the time? You know? It would be a beautiful world if they did. It'd be a shorter mm -hmm. series as well. Then I wouldn't have to write 14 books. Well, it, it, it do you, is there something that you're that's percolating in the back of your mind that you want to write after this? Or are you still only thinking about the 14 books? Are you one of those lucky people who only thinks about the one series they're writing and doesn't have 48 million other ideas? Oh no, I've I've got 48 million other ideas. I've got like a plan of a few series that I'm going to write afterwards. So I'm, you know, I'm not going anywhere. Are they going to be in the same world or are they going to be like a new fantasy world with like a new world think, building and rules? I think once I'm done with 14, I maybe want to leave Ethereus for a little while. <laughs> yeah, go take a vacation. Places, try some <laughs> new stuff. But there's a couple ideas I've had that actually would fit nicely back in that world. Mm -hmm. So my plan is to revisit it at some point. But what one, once I've had a holiday. So when you write vacation. so when you write 14 books in another series and you need a break from that world. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I sort of I don't want to start any of those ideas yet because I want to make sure I focus on this one and do mm -hmm. it right. Because you know I know how important it is for readers who are following the series. You know, they're making an investment of their time reading my work. So I want to make sure I'm giving them that payoff as I'm, you know, all right, this is this is the project I'm doing now. Right, right, right. You, you will have your next book. No, yeah, no, we definitely want to deliver the next book. We're, we're yeah. not one of those people who we, yeah, I, yeah, I try really hard to make sure that I finish everything I start because it's. It's hard. Sometimes it might take a few years because characters are contrary and they don't always listen. And, yeah. you know, we can't make them do anything ever. So sometimes we're we're stuck waiting for that. To yeah, which is, which is one of the reasons I'm glad I'm about six books ahead of my publishing schedule. Yeah, yeah. It gives me that time to keep sort of refining them and dialing them down and adding a little bit here and there to make 
the previous ones make a bit more sense. No, that's 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 awesome that you're so far ahead. I'm jealous. I'm not ahead. <laughs> I'm only a little bit ahead. That's a that's a cool place to be. I'm wishing I were that far ahead. Well, but... I mean, it's a bit of a um yeah, as much as it's nice to be that far ahead, it's also I've got all these books on my computer. I'm like, I want to publish these. <laughs> Can I Yeah. These these need to go somewhere. People need to read this stuff. There's exciting stuff in this one. Yeah, that's true. Like, because then you've got things that are just sitting there waiting, and and you have books with no readers because they're yeah. not somewhere readers can get to them. Yeah, yeah I didn't I've got think of stories that. to share, but I can't share them for probably oh, 2027. Would you do another 14 book series? Well, I say no. I might do if it, but only if it comes up organically again. I mean, yeah, with this one, I've given myself quite a bit to chew, but I think from here on, it's probably going to be trilogies, four book series for a while, at least. So you get a break from plotting 14 books. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It is, you know, it is quite a time investment. But, you know, I'm very much, you know, I want to finish what, my, what I started. I've got almost an obligation to Nicholas. That's you know, true. That's true. He knows where you live. Exactly. <laughs> As we discussed. You know, I, started some, I started this. I put you in this situation. I've done some pretty mean stuff to you. You know, you deserve the payoff. Yeah, I, I would definitely I, I would definitely agree with that. We need to make sure the characters get what they're what's coming to them. <laughs> exactly. Moo ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Evil laugh insert here. <laughs> Well, it's been fantastic having you on here. Is there anything else you want to say about the simple delivery or any of the things we've talked about? Um, hmm. What do I want to say? What else can I say about it, really? <laughs> yeah, I think, I think the, I think the main thing I can say about it is that I have a lot of fun writing it, and you know, I, I really hope that comes across to the reader when they're you know, in the, in the story, mm -hmm. you know, in this, I'm, I'm writing 14 books is a labor of love. You know, I'm not, no, no, no one's sort of sat behind me with a sword saying you will finish this series. I love these characters. You know, I, I'm really enjoying their journey and I hope that the people who are invested in that journey as well are loving it just as much. So Nicholas is not standing behind you with a sword. <laughs> I'm legally obliged to say no. Nah, I'm saying no. Ow. <laughs> She's your blade, man. Are you regretting teaching him how to use one? <laughs> Pretty much. <yeah. laughs> well, then again, not because it makes the fight scenes I write in later books much more entertaining. That's true. That's true. Less, That's less, true. less flailing around and more um, actual combat. Yeah. See, you, so you like writing combat? Yeah, I do. I, I quite enjoy writing, getting my teeth into a good fight scene. And obviously, for the first couple of books, that's a bit tricky because <laughs> he doesn't know how to fight. But again, it's, you know, it's the reader's journey. You know, mm -hmm. you see this kid, he's got not much about him except a good heart. You know, how will he do? And I'm hoping that's what keeps people coming back to the next books in the series. OK, let's see. Let's see how he's doing this time. Has, has he improved? You know, did can he maintain a level of physical fitness? Can he lift the sword without his wrist hurting? Yeah. I mean, that's that's def yeah, that's definitely a concern. Because, you know, if you're going places by foot, I mean, your legs are getting a lot of exercise, <laughs> but not really your no, arms. I, I do let him have a horse occasionally. Oh, I don't. I mean, because I don't know anything <laughs> about riding horses, so eh can't really write about them doing something i don't actually know anything about <laughs> oh, that is true so i'm mean i'm like no you can't have a horse because i don't really know anything about horses so you're just gonna have to walk <laughs> it's all right you guys can walk you can handle it it's all right i suppose another thing i'd like to mention is that i include like little nods to my um my inspirations in it as well i, I like to include little easter eggs in my work mm -hmm. Like for the discerning. Oh, hang on. Is that, is he referencing that? 
it's so I, oh. I don't I don't even know how I started doing it, but it's just something fun I've gotten used to doing now. Like I'm not I'm doing not to a movie or mm-hmm. a game that I like or another book that I'm interested in. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, and I have a lot of fun writing it as well. Sometimes mm-hmm. I'll, I'll be writing something like, oh, hang on, I can include a cheeky reference here. Sometimes they're a little bit more ham fisted than others, but no, that sounds that's I like to do that stuff too, especially when you can reference something that was in like I have I've written I've written and published like 20 books, over 20 books across yeah. like five series. Well, six. I'm writing a new one because why not? More more series, more merrier. <laughs> They're like children. They just kind of multiply on their own. I don't know. <laughs> the <think> series. Really? <laughs> Well, you know, once you open the door and let one character in, like, it just becomes a revolving door. <laughs> more and more characters come in and tell you their stories. And then you end they up writing. That. Yeah. And then you're like, you know what? We're just going to start writing multi-point of view books because so we can start getting these characters into stories and out of my head. <laughs> yes. As the cast gets unwieldy. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. This has been Thank you this has been fun. On. And you and yeah, oh, you're very welcome. You're welcome to come back with um with another book. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, I'm I'm on it. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Maybe a slight bit. <laughs> you know what? I'm I'm just happy I could talk about them and my mind didn't go blank the minute you pressed record. <laughs> no, no, and like I like hearing about the different story worlds and like, you know, like how you set up your 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 do you have a religion are there gods what is your magic system like what is your world like what's your what's what's your favorite cool place there like i like hearing that i I don't know why like i'm such a nerd like i like that stuff you know and where the idea came from i love that it came from a video game whose music i listen to while i write but i've never played it (laughs) absolutely (laughs) never played it well if you ever do you'll be you'll you'll get to put your that's what he meant. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have like half the lyrics memorized for some of the, the songs that they're singing. You know, they rhyme in both English and in I forget the name of the language that they created for Skyrim. Oh, you know what? I can't think of it either now. My mind's drawing a blank. But um just one sort of funny side note because the characters in computer games who give you these messages are called NPCs, like non player mm-hmm. characters. So, non-player character, Nicholas Percival Carnegie. Uh, <laughs> and that's oh the sort of type of in my series. Oh my god, that's so fun! Yeah, so that, that's the reason he's named Nicholas, for no other reason than I, I needed names, three, three names that spelt out NPC. Oh my god, I love that. I love that his initials... That's, I love that. I I like nice. stuff like that. People have got it, and they've said, "Hang on, is he?" Yes, <laughs> yes. I am gratified. I'm my work here is done. Well, no, it's not done because I'm only writing book nine. But you know, what yeah, I mean. yeah. You, you you've got six more books to write, so uh, yes. you're you're not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> and and the real question is: Is Nicholas going to let you stop writing about him after book fourteen? <laughs> Or will you be coming back and be like, you know, now it's going to be 21 books in the series. Oh, don't. I'm, I'm already. That, that's that's happened to me a couple of times. Oh, I could do this. No, 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 no. You said 14. But you know yeah. what? He might, he might come back. But for, for the 14, that will be the overarching story. And that's enough books for me to tell that story properly. So, you know, what happens beyond that? I don't know. He might. He might come back. <laughs> the wheels are already turning. Oh my god, they are now. <laughs> I'm going to open a word document. <laughs> oh, I love when that happens. When they, when when authors leave here with um, more ideas than when they arrive, <laughs> the ideas are free. The conversation is free. <laughs> Yeah, I've been talking to my wife in the morning. How did the podcast go? Oh, Melinda gave me more ideas for books. That happened last week, too. We started brainstorming um, just different things. And she's like, I need to write all this down. <laughs> she she left with many ideas for future books. Nice. Um, 
that's what she said too. She's like, I didn't expect to be brainstorming books in here. I was like, well, I'm also a fantasy author. <laughs> so, I will do it when two authors yeah, put their heads together. That's true. And her world had some really fun, um, like rules to it. So we were just like, so you know, we were just digging into that because it's fun when when authors have like an in, like like um like you have the the thing where like the gods have to send a message and there's all sorts of stipulations mm -hmm. so like that's a real that's a cool thing like it was it was something like like bigger than that that we is in we and i was just like asking i was just curious like how does this work uh it was about a fairy tale a fairy yeah. tale governs like their lives oh, and okay. like they didn't feel if you don't feel like it then the fairy tale is like well then you you don't get you you're gonna lose the castle you're gonna you know lose your home you're gonna you know you're no longer the main character your life is gonna be pretty not so nice oh wow and there was just really fun implications with that and and I and I was I wondered like well what happens if you're like random farmer's kid and you want to be in the fairy tale and this princess doesn't really want to be in it she likes her life as is and has no interest in happily ever afters or anything else <laughs> just and like and we just. It just I just had so many questions, <laughs> nice. you know. So and so that ended up being a, a accidental brainstorm session <laughs> as we started like thinking through the different like things implications of that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but I've kept you here long enough. Thank you so much again for coming. <laughs> Any last thoughts <laughs> for real this time? <laughs> Any last thoughts? I suppose I could sum up my series quite succinctly in the good guys are good, the bad guys are bad, the good guys punch them in the face, and it's a wild ride. Oh, I like that. I I, I like that. I like I like how you sum that up. I think that's I think that's awesome. That that's that's the general ethos. <laughs> <laughs> it works. No, that that's that's like the traditional fantasy with lots of humor too it sounds like i might write that down and put it over my desk okay go for it I'll, like Man, i said bro. the ideas are free take them and do with them as you will i have way more ideas or things than i can write so um <laughs> they're all yours <laughs> um but yeah thanks again for coming and this has been another episode of fantasy lore and more today we had andrew clayton and we talked about a simple delivery that wasn't quite so simple <laughs> that a simple delivery that wasn't quite so simple in 14 parts <laughs> <laughs> the simple delivery in theory in theory <laughs> That's like the at the end of the 14th book i wonder what he would say about that simple delivery <laughs> how he would describe it a simple delivery that took 14 books and how many years of his life <laughs> He probably wouldn't say anything that um, should be recorded on a podcast. Oh, oh no. Oh, <laughs> the truth comes out. <laughs> All right. Well, y'all have to wait for the 14th book. And what was it? 2029. <laughs> probably. I don't want to. I'm, I'm just thinking about tomorrow. at the moment. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. Possibly 2029, which is not that far off, actually. As quick as um, I can. <laughs> yeah, as quickly as you can. Um, but you still you have plenty of books before that. Um, there's four now and five and six are coming out this year. They so are. that that's quite a, that's quite a chunk of story to read. So I hope you'll all pick up a copy of the Sim delivery and check it out. And uh, if you come back, we'll have another fantasy author and another fantasy book next time. And don't forget to like, subscribe, follow all the things so that you get notified when these episodes drop because it, it, you know, and, and leave reviews. And if you really like something, feel free to, Hit up the author and let them know. We we like compliments. <laughs> it 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 really it can really help, you know, if we're having a bad day or the characters are really not listening to us or they've done that really dumb thing and now we need to save them from something that we didn't intend for them to do. <laughs> Hearing that you enjoyed the books might give us the, the will to push on like Nicholas and get them out of trouble <laughs> somehow. <laughs> Thank you and have a great day or great night wherever you are. Bye.